everyone, Shannon Petrovich with Therapist Talks. Today's topic is suicide prevention. How to talk to someone you love if you think they may be suicidal. I'm going to give you some concrete steps to take and it's going to be a quick and dirty video that's going to help you to outline the things that you can do. Over 120 people commit suicide every day in the U.S. and all of them probably have people who love them who didn't know what to say and didn't know what to do. So here are some steps. Let's jump in. The first thing you want to do is assess why is it that you're worried. List off the things that you're seeing that are bothering you, that are making you really concerned about this person. Are you seeing a deepening of depression, a sense of despair, a sense of overwhelm, a sense of them losing their resilience and their ability to cope? Are you noticing them uh, to stop taking care of themselves? Are they not going to work or to school? Are they not eating or sleeping? Um, all of these things are indications that they are really not doing well. So you make that list so that you have it really concretely in front of you when you go to the next step. Number two, connect. This should be in person if at all possible. If not, try to do it on a video conference of some sort like FaceTime or Skype. And the last choice would be telephone. So when you connect, what you want to do is reflect back everything that you've just listed off. You want to let them know all of the things that you're seeing, that you're hearing, that you're concerned about. So often people really don't feel like anybody sees them or hears them or really understands them. When you hold up this, this reflection of them and let them know that you really are concerned and you really do see what's going on, that helps them feel not so alone and not so in despair. The third is to listen. So when you hopefully open that person up and help them to talk about what's going on, then listen. Listen carefully for helplessness, for hopelessness, and for that sense of despair. Listen if they don't want to be around anymore and if they have the ways and means to do that. The next is to express you want to express a bunch of different things and the first is you want to express your love and concern and worry for that person and really drive that point home. The next is to let them know that feelings are not facts. That's a really important piece. Feelings are not facts. People can feel despair and feel hopeless and helpless and yet they're not. We are not hopeless, we are not helpless, there are always things that we can do to get out of the situation or past the grief or loss or trauma or whatever it is that we're in. There is always a way out. So help them know feelings are not facts. Help them to recognize their strengths. As somebody who loves that person, you know their strengths better than anyone, so point out their strengths. Point out things that they've gone through in the past that were really hard and that they were able to overcome. And the next thing you want to do is to help them to understand that their feelings are temporary and the act of suicide is permanently devastating to those who love them, uh, you included. So help them to understand feelings are temporary, that act is permanent. And then offer to be there for them as they walk through whatever it is they're struggling with. Help them to understand and to chunk it down into first steps and next steps and, and how to get past that really stuck place. Oftentimes in the depths of that depression, a person feels completely paralyzed and completely stuck. And if they have someone to walk alongside them and walk with them through those first steps, they feel a lot better. So really be there for them and really help help create a plan of next steps, first steps and next steps. Lastly, don't go this alone. You need to include somebody else so that you don't feel like you are the only one with all this information about this person and your worries about this person. If they have a, a family member or a sibling, a parent, a sibling, um, anybody, another friend that you can involve, Obviously, you want to hopefully get that person's permission to include somebody else, but ultimately, you do not want to go this alone, so you need to bounce this off of another close person that you can trust. If they truly have nobody else in their lives that they can trust, then call the Suicide Prevention Hotline yourself, walk through this whole situation with them, and get any new information from them that you might be able to glean. In most communities, there are 
not only suicide prevention hotlines, but there are crisis teams that can show up to an office or a home and assess a person and help get them to a hospital if they need to be. That's it for today. I hope this has been helpful. Um, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, uh, leave a review. Also post comments, questions, and suggestions for future videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon.